Hi, it's Paul, and today I'm an old man with a little conundrum. We have a leak, but the question is, how do we turn it off? Because I've got two stopcocks here, I've turned both of them off, and it's still leaking. Also, why have I got two stopcocks? Now I will give a hint and say this is a commercial building, so there may be a clue in that. But we're going to do a bit of work and we're going to take a look. So before we do anything else, let's add a little clarity to this. First of all, what we see here is what we believe to be an old redundant stop valve on an old line coming in. But that does beg the question, if that's the case, why didn't whoever fitted the new one just cap off the old one and disconnect it? More on this later. In the meantime though, then we have this stop valve on a blue incomer, which we believe to be the current feed based on the fact there was a leak outside in the car park earlier in the year and when it was excavated we found a blue mains feed, which we believe to be the feed for the building. So to recap, we have the valve on the blue plastic pipe, which we believe to be the new main feed, and we have the valve on the metal pipe, which if anything we thought might be a feed out to an external supply which is up the other end of the building. The issue was, it didn't matter which stopcock I turned off, or even if I jammed both of them shut, it still leaked under pressure, and so it's not just the water draining out of the pipes, it was leaking under pressure. So... I crimped up the leaking joint by about a quarter of a turn and it seemed okay so we left it. And a couple of weeks later I got sent this video which told me it wasn't. Hi Paul, yeah it's uh, leaking again from the T piece by the look of it and it's definitely coming out faster than it was um, so it's already sort of starting to fill the bucket um, so I'm not sure where we go from there. Alright, cheers, bye. So, what I'll now do is introduce the final piece of the jigsaw, which is this. This is the, should be, the stop valve and water meter out in the road, where we can isolate it. But, here's a view of the pavement from a different angle, and you can see it's all collapsed and sort of punched about, because it gets huge trucks parking on it. And what that's effectively done, is it's buried the stop valve, and it's not accessible. So we cannot turn the water off to the premises. We also cannot turn off either stop valve, thus we cannot isolate the mains. Hmm, what to do next then? So now we come to the reason I've actually posted this video. If you look on YouTube, you'll find a couple of videos of people saying they're changing stop valves on live water mains. One is definitely a radiator feed, it's not a live water main, there isn't enough pressure. The other that I've found, it's a bit of a trickle, maybe it's a live main, but it certainly isn't what you'll see as we move into what I'm about to do now. Because I am changing the valve on a live water main, and you'll see what happens any second now. So I'll just freeze this for a second with the nice water feature going on in the background. Maybe I should put some ASMR music over the top and I'll explain what I did. So I got a brand new valve exactly the same as the old valve. I fitted a hose to the end of it which I put down a WC in the premises and I left the valve open so that when I took off the old valve and quickly put on the new valve you don't build up pressure. It's an open valve so the water goes straight through it so it gives you a little bit of a chance to try and connect it up without too much drama. Didn't work quite as well as I'd hoped, but it did work. Chopped out a moment of the video there where all you could see was the back of my head and you'll see me now trying to do the nut up on it and it wouldn't go on properly. I subsequently found out that this was because of the Jubilee clip I'd put on the hose was holding the valve off the wall and it wouldn't tighten as well as I'd hoped it would. Also at this point, I'm very conscious of the fact I can still hear water running. And in a second you'll see me run off because I've realised that the hose has jumped out of the WC and the water is still going all over the floor. So I've gone and put the hose back in the WC. I will then come back to the fitting again, put it back on. 
and immediately I hear it blow the hose out again, so I go and attend to the hose again. I then cut the end off it, jammed it down the WC, and came back and put the valve on yet again. Here we come, just back into the room. So, valve now on again. Over the next couple of minutes you'll see me playing around with it to try and figure out why the thread isn't doing up properly and as I say I figured out it's because it was being held off the wall and if I moved the pipe about a bit I could get it to line up and I could get the, the thread to screw on properly. So that was that solved. Um, I'll speed through it and you'll see me then shut the valve off and that is that part of the job done. Fantastic, so incoming water main now isolated, the water is off, so I can finally continue and try and repair the pipework. So just a quick final check of the fittings and go and empty the bucket because it's full again just to take any water that's dripping out of the system. Um, the water's dripping from the new fitted stop valve because the hose fitting on the top is leaking by the way. That's loose, not worried about that, I can live with that. So I come back with the bucket, put the bucket underneath the old stop valve which is still on the old pipe work. I turn it on to open it up to drain the water out and it comes out at force and so I'm now thinking well that's not right there isn't that much head on it the tank is probably about 15 foot up in the roof space and there shouldn't be that much pressure on it so what do we do now it's at this point I've figured out that the other pipe coming out of the floor is also an incoming mains who knew two incoming mains so I've now got to do something about that so as I'm stood or sat thinking about it logically the thing to do is to isolate or put an isolator in the line that comes off the flexi because there's a bit of copper in there I can screw a cannonball valve on the end of that and that will shut that off for a minute because I've still got to fix the pipe work so I've gone off now to have a hunt through the fittings um, stupidly I left the water running could have turned that off Paul but no matter I've got on to look for an isolator valve ball isolator valve I'm going to stick that in that line and then I'll be able to turn that piece of it off because again that stopcock on the floor does not turn off So I've come back again now and realised what I really ought to do is turn that stop valve off and stop the water coming out, that's fine, that's stopped that for a moment, gone back off to find the fitting again, back in a second, empty the bucket and we continue. Okay, then open the valve again to let the pressure out. Undo the olive on the end of the T-piece. Get my isolator valve ready. Left it open so it can just blow straight into the bucket. Put it on the end of the hose. Tighten the union nut up. And quickly turn it off with a screwdriver. And that is both water mains isolated. So now, at last... I can worry about what I need to do with the pipe work. I'm going to leave the video running at high speed in the background. You'll see me tightening up the isolator valve on that side, take the T-piece out. I cut the pipe on the left-hand side, 
put a new isolator valve in there so the isolate so the feed that goes off to the left which feeds a couple of sinks of urinal some bits and pieces that now has an isolator on it yes I know there will be people screaming in the comments about those isolators are useless well aware of that so now we've got both incoming mains are isolated all the supplies are isolated the only thing that's in trouble now is the other the old valve on the old incoming main which is still not working properly so at some point in the next few weeks I will put an isolator valve in that white plastic line to be able to shut off that water main. Um, at this point, any second now, the video is going to actually stop because the battery ran out on my camera. But you can see uh, basically what I did and what I had to do. The key things being if you're going to do something like this on a water main, you've got to be prepared you're going to get a lot of water, even if you do it better than me, you're going to get a lot of water. You've got to be ready with your, your hose on your new valve, you've got to be ready to replace it. You see me now, I'm just taking it off again because um, I just wanted to make sure that thread was lined up properly. I was a bit nervous about that, I'm now fully confident it's okay at the end. Um, you see me go around and tighten all the fittings, make sure everything's okay. But going back to the, the preparation, you've got to be ready for water. As a matter of interest, I got 60 litres up off the, wall, off the floor. I've got a Wix wet and dry vacuum cleaner, and I sucked up three tankfuls of that because it's got a 20 litre tank on it. And I took three tankfuls off the floor, so that's 60 odd litres of water all over the floor. You'll see in the photo now what I ended up with. It's not pretty. Yes, ideally it all wants ripping out, but that's not going to happen because there isn't a budget to do that. So it is what it is. Um, ideally I'd get rid of the flexi, but all of it's going to demand a lot more work. And maybe I'll do that when I resolve the right hand old stopcock in a couple of weeks time. We shall see. Hopefully it's been of some interest. Um, if nothing else, it might put you off the idea of changing a stop valve on a water main, because uh, really it isn't for the faint-hearted. Um, if you've enjoyed it, feel free to put a like on there. Subscribe if you want to see more stuff that I get involved in, more DIY things, more tool tips and all the rest of it. Have a look at the uh, website, oldmanwith.com. Thanks for your time, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye. But wait, so a bit of a last minute dot com insert here. Here you can see a layer of the building concerned. On the left is the road, just drawn in the valve and the pipe going into the building. This is how we think it used to be. So the old pipe sprung a leak, marked in blue, and the contractors put in a new pipe, which you'll see going in now and that came up next to the old pipe however what we found was there was a t-piece on the new pipe which we think the contractors put in to join to what they believed was the connection that went right the way around the building to the other end of the building to supply a tap right at the other end of the premises but we think what they've actually done is connect onto the old main feed and the pipe to the other end of the building and this is why there's still a live main feed coming up through the wall, through the floor. Uh, the original leaking pipe was capped off, that much we do know because there isn't water pouring out all over the place, um, but it's clearly not right. So, there you go. See you again.